Hello everybody, welcome back to episode 2 of Cutting the Nets, the, the CBGM podcast show here on the channel. And well, I'm joined by none other than, I think at this point we're probably going to have to call him a co-presenter because he's been on so many times now. He's been here for the pilot, he's been here for the first episode and the second episode. He's still going strong. Kev, welcome back to the uh, to the podcast. Hey, excited to be here. Um, episode two technically three i guess um should be fun yeah i mean every time you say that it's, it's getting it's getting um more sober and sober i think uh <laughs> I, I you know we, we, we get in there we get in there but uh you know it's great to, obviously it's great to have you back on i'm just i'm just choking of course um but it is also we are actually joined by a a, a guest on the show today um which you know this is great because we're going to actually you know, use this guest knowledge and experience in the CBGM to kind of talk about about a particular conference for this episode. And well, we're joined by Blink, who is the uh, Georgia Tech coach, amongst many other coaches in there in the CBGM. He has four teams, which is just amazing. I don't know how he manages to keep up with it, to be honest with you. But Blink, it's great to have you on the show. Um, tell us a little bit about the uh, the teams you have. Yeah, first off, uh, thanks for having me. It's a pleasure being on the show here. Hope to uh, to uh, be able to provide some insight here uh, for not only Georgia Tech and some of the other teams I, I run, but also the ACC. Um, so yeah, I'll just dive right in. Uh, basically, Georgia Tech is a team under construction right now. Um, if you look at our team roster, we've got, uh, I think, four four freshmen that are seeing, three of them are seeing uh, relatively uh, decent minutes. And uh, one of our freshmen is actually leading the team in scoring, uh, Nate Hines. So I added about five or six freshmen from the last recruiting class. Um, and then I'm trying to get a few more in here. We're trying to, we're trying to do a whole roster overhaul uh, so that we can start to compete in the uh, ever competitive ACC, which is just uh, crazy. Um, when you're trying to compete against some of the teams in it. Yeah, no, it's, it's really interesting. I mean, it's, it's great that we're, we're diving into a team that's probably not considered a top 25 team at this stage. So, yeah, but, but in a very, very tough conference. I mean, it, it, Kevin, in your opinion, what, what, you know, what's your take on, on Georgia Tech and the ACC before we kind of give it back to Blink and get his, his first-hand experience of what he's trying to do there? Um, well, first of all, let me just say that uh, I, I hate seeing Nate Hines do so well at Georgia Tech. Um, he was one of my top targets, uh, being from Alabama, and for whatever reason had zero interest in coming to, to the Crimson Tide, um, like all elite Alabama players, it seems. So good for you, Blink, but you know I, I'm a little bitter about seeing him, him land and do so well. Um, but yeah, so Georgia Tech as a whole, man, I, I think um, I think Blink's doing a really solid job. I, I looked at them a little bit early on in the season, um, just kind of randomly going through some teams, and and I, you know, it, it didn't look like a team that was going to have a lot to to work with. Um, I, I thought he might be. Um, I, I felt like they might they may take some some time to really get going um 10 and 7 4 and 4 in the acc like to me that's like a really good start for them um very young team not super talented on paper but you know so far they're they're really getting it done which is which is quite impressive um and then yeah like you kind of said at the beginning the acc as a whole i, I haven't paid a ton of attention to it just because you know it's not a league that i'm very active in but but i looked at it a little bit today and uh man, Bloodbass is right. You know, you you've got uh, four teams up there. Uh, let, let let let's hold let's hold the ACC talk as a, as a general for for a moment. Let's just sure. get Blink to just dive back in on this team. So obviously, you know, okay. you're giving your observations in terms of how you think the team looks. And Blink, you obviously said that you're obviously focusing on really completely changing this team with a huge transition with, with the freshman class that you, you talked about. What's what's your overall goal with with Georgia Tech? For this season and going forward uh this season the goal is to basically if we can we can stay 500 in the acc um 
So if we can, I think there's 20 games in the ACC uh, for conference play. If we can go 10 and 10, I think that's pretty successful uh, considering the roster that I've got right now. Um, and the goal is was just to uh, basically, again, go 500 in the ACC and then try to make a postseason tournament after uh, my first year last year uh, was a bit of a struggle with this team. We went 11 and 20. So we've already got 10 wins on the seasons. We've already almost matched what we did last year. So um, I'm hoping to get 15, 16 wins out of these guys. Um, and then we can see if we can make you know, an NIT or uh, possibly uh, one of the other tournaments, CBI, CIT, depending on how we do in the ACC uh, playoffs, right? The ACC conference tournament. So um, when you look at my team, I'm kind of like, you know, you look at the star ratings and, you know, it's not the best way to look at a team, but, you know, obviously I've got about uh, one guy with a three and a half star rating here, um, Craig Wild. He's my uh, five, six point guard that I really use as a shooting guard because he's uh, one of my better scorers on the team. Um, but not a whole lot of depth right now. I'm trying to, I'm trying to build some depth as the, uh, as the season progresses, even to next year with the uh, new recruiting class coming in. Uh, I'm trying to get some solid depth here, trying to build a team around four-year players. Um, I'm not going to be a team that I can get one and dones, I don't think. So I'm trying to get some solid guys that I can, uh, you know, use for three, four years, build a uh, solid team with, and then um, be able to uh, run the offenses effectively. Yeah, no, it's, it's really interesting in terms of... I, I, I want to pick your brains on a, on a couple of things before we talk about the, the ACC. And um, I mean, a couple of things I, I'm interested in. So if we just kept, continue with Craig uh, Wilder, you know, a five foot six point guard. And I think the question that everyone's going to be asking is, yep, he may be a good scorer, but how, how do you kind of feel his defensive game works in, in this engine? Where obviously... In real life, let's be honest, he is going to be completely torn apart on 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 defense because of his height, and they they'll ha you'll have to you'd have to hide him some way, and be that you know, being more aggressive with him up front and and giving him better help. But I mean, in terms of how you how it works in in the actual game engine, how, how have you found that so far? Um, not too bad. I mean, if you look at his stats from last year, um. He's actually having a better season last year than he is this year. Um, not too sure what's going on with that. I was kind of looking at that last night, trying to figure out how to get him going. Um, reason I've got him playing shooting guard is I've got um, Pierre Bradley here, who's um, he's going to be my point guard. He's a little better ball handler, uh, less of a scorer. Um, plus, he's also a sophomore. I figure if I can maybe use him at the point. I can uh, try and build a little bit around him. Uh, this was a team that I took over, didn't have a whole lot of talent to begin with. So even last year, uh, we really struggled to score. So I was trying to trying to use Craig Wild as much as I could in, in a scoring role, even though, you know, if on a decent team or on a, on a really good team, he'd probably be um, point guard for sure. But I just don't really have any other options right now. Um, Looking at the roster, I've also got Wright Strom, who's also a uh, freshman point guard, who is probably going to take over uh, next year um, one of the starting roles. So we're trying to get him a bunch of minutes this year, and hopefully he'll uh, progress into a, a decent uh, two, three-year starter for us. Yeah, yeah, certainly. I mean, I, I guess switching back over to sort of Kev, I mean, in terms of the team, I mean, you talked about Georgia Tech and kind of where they are and how tough a situation it is. Obviously, you look at the the potential of some of the, the freshman class that, that uh, Blink, Blink has brought in. I mean, how, how, do you feel that's going to eventually transition for this Georgia Tech team? I mean, uh, how, how would you feel if you end up with a, um, a roster that looked like this with, you know, some some really good freshmen who have huge potential. Um, how would you try and sort of mold this team going forward? Um, I mean, I think Blink's approach is 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 pretty much what what I would try you know to do. Um, I, I I like it. I, I like it for what it is in in terms of Georgia Tech. Um, you know, obviously competing in the ACC at some point, you know, everybody's going to want to get more talent in. But 
Um, I do like his his approach to building it with four year guys. I think you know obviously he's got a, a, all four year guys here. Um, the you know his young guys like you said Wright, Strom, and Nate Hines at least um, seem to be getting. I'm trying to pull your stats up. Seem to be getting a lot of PT. Um, so I think that's going to be really good for their development. Um, who and then even Abrams is getting you know, 20 minutes a game. And so I, I think that is going to be um, a big help going forward. You know, obviously you lose Craig Wild, um, you lose you lose Erickson. Um, I haven't looked at, at, you know, your recruiting class blink or anything, but um, I, I do think there's some some positive momentum. You know, if he can finish at kind of 500, like you said, and, and especially if you can get an NIT bid with this group, um, bringing in a, a few more pieces and having these guys like Nate Hines and, and Wright Strom um, grow, you know, in terms of, of talent and ability. And I think you got the, the core to be, to be a, a competitive ACC team. Um, you know, and then that's, you know, that's all you got to do and, and to, to at least get your foot in the door kind of it, it, for lack of a better terms. And then, you know, you kind of just build from there. So I like the direction of the team. Um, obviously we all wish we would inherit lineups or, or rosters with, you know, um, Four or five, four star, five, you know, four year guys, but um, but that's not the case for most of us. So. Yeah, we we all can't be like UNC and just uh, land classic recruiting classes. But let's let's talk about the Georgia Tech recruiting class then, and 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 Blink. I mean, you've got you've got two guys that you've got um, arriving next year. Um, a point guard, I'm guessing, to obviously replace the uh, the likes of uh, of Wild uh, Wilder going out, and then you've got Richard, I guess, coming in to replace your seniors in the front court. Just tell us a little bit about um, what you liked about those two guys you've got coming in next year. Yeah, um, Richard was a guy that I targeted uh, early, uh, especially when I'm losing a couple of centers um, on my roster as it is. So obviously I'm going to need a center to come in and and uh, replace some of those minutes um, from the top guys right now. Uh, Leon here, he was a top 10 player at the Memphis Hoop Summit. So uh, he was, again, a guy that I targeted early and seemed to have some pretty good success um, getting him to come in. He's got a uh, decent size here, seven foot one, 291 pound beast. Uh, so hopefully he can uh, go head to head with some of the uh, bigger ACC um, talented centers that uh, he's going to be facing night in, night out. And um, yeah, it just, uh, he seems like a guy that's going to fit what we're trying to do. We're trying to get some guys that can shoot. We're also trying to get some guys that are good all around players. Um and we're trying to focus on on defense a little bit too. Um, trying to you know make sure that we are strong defensively against some of these more talented ACC teams. So uh, defense is something that I'm trying to bring in. Uh, so Richard's got that. He's a B plus in defense. So hopefully that translates into a um, a good four year player for us. Um, moving on to Quincy Stewart. Uh, Quincy Stewart was a guy that we liked um, not so much because of his stature or his prowess, but uh, his ball handling and passing is what we really like about him. He's um, A in passing, A minus in ball handling. And we're trying to get, um, I'm trying to accumulate a bunch of guys that are good at ball handling and defense. Um, those are two areas that I feel are crucial to uh, building a successful team. So um, Quincy Stewart is gonna come in again, be a four year guy for us. Um, hopefully see some action as a freshman. And then uh, moving forward, he's going to see more and more action for us. Um, but we're always looking to add some other talent, right? So I'm looking at my uh, my team offers here. Got four other offers on the table. A um, couple guys that are really, really wanted. Uh, ended up going to Florida, which really hurt me. So I'm trying to uh, fill the gaps in as best I can with some other guys that I think can be some solid players for us. <coughs> Uh, right now, I'm only hot on one of them, Johnny Smalls, uh, so I'm hoping he commits. Um, unfortunately, I am out of money with my budget, so I just have to uh, hope these guys, um, I guess, like what Georgia Tech's doing this year and uh, are ready to uh, join the program. Yeah, it's certainly interesting. We'll, we'll see what happens. So I, I, I'm really interested about Leon Richard just because that, that height as well with that shooting is going to be uh, a fascinating watch, I think, for, for, for you guys um, next year. But we're not focusing on next year now. Let's, let's focus a bit on this year. And I know I know Kev has probably been dying at the mic to dive into the ACC. 
um, since I cut him off earlier. So I'm going to allow him first, first, first pass at how how everything is looking and how it's landing. We've we've had about eight or nine games now in in the conference. Kev, give, take it away. What's your take on the, the ACC so far? Um, yeah, I don't know if I was dying. I, I just I, I I thought you you wanted just to dive in, but. It is interesting. So now that I've actually looked at it, like I, I do think it, it's a very interesting conference. And, and um, I, I believe Blink said he, he thinks there's about 10 um, conference games left, uh, which means, you know, at this stage, um, it, it's really anybody's, you know, regular season conference title to, to take. Um, I, I think at first glance, it's going to come down to the, the guys that are in the top four, you know, your Blue Bloods. Um, Notre Dame started off really well in conference, 7-1. Um, and one. Um, Pitt, obviously, is, you know, number three in the country. And then Louisville has, has also um, kind of figured things out lately um, and sit at, like, 6-2 and two as well. And, and, of course, I'm not quite ready to hop off of the Dan McCray bandwagon and the USC bandwagon yet. Um They've had some struggles, and I think if I'd looked correctly, I think Blank, you just beat them um, in the last sim. So, um, but I think those four are going to be the ones who end up vying for the titles. Um, I think Georgia Tech's got a really good chance at finishing in the top half of, of the ACC this year. Um, I think Duke, we know, will rebound some, and, and Syracuse is is a, is a team at the bottom right now that that is interesting to me because I. I think I, I played them with Bama earlier in the year, and they 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 look pretty good. Um, um, again, but like Bling mentioned earlier, sometimes looking at, at teams on paper is not always the best best view. So, um, so so in short, you know, I, I think it really is anybody's ball game. I, I do think it's going to kind of come down to those top four teams, but um, the tournament, you know, Fury is where I think it's going to get fun. Um, cause I think this is gonna, this is setting up to be a tournament where you got a team like Georgia Tech and Blink, um, you've got a team like Duke sitting down there and even a Clemson or a Syracuse who really could, could pop somebody early in the tournament and make things really interesting. Yeah. And, and Blink, what, what's your take on it? Um, obviously being in the division, it must feel nice to be above Duke though, surely. And then likes of Syracuse. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, for sure. I mean, I'm an actual, I'm a Duke supporter in, in real life here. Uh, that's my team that I've supported for years and years, ever since I was a kid. Uh, first team I ever saw on TV, actually, in the NCAA tournament was Duke. So it's uh, uh, it's always nice to be ahead of those guys, for sure. I mean, I, I kind of thought they'd struggle a little bit this year, just um, given the fact that now they're, they're run by the AI instead of a human. Um, obviously, uh, you never know how that's going to turn out. Um, I would agree. I would agree with what Kevs was saying with uh, Syracuse. Uh, Syracuse is really one team that I um, mean, looking at them right now, they're two and six, nine and nine overall. Um, lost five in a row, though. I really thought they'd be a middle, middle uh, to upper tier team in the ACC, um, especially since uh, I think one of the previous coaches' corners had uh, Brandon, the uh, the uh, coach of Syracuse, on talking about his uh, philosophies and all that. So. Uh, liked what I heard from him. Um, one team that I will say uh, maybe to watch out for that hasn't been mentioned is Virginia Tech. Uh, Virginia Tech is uh, right right uh, tied with me right now, four and four. But they just got their best player back from injury. Uh, he was out a month, I believe, uh, and he just came back. So they've actually been able to tread water pretty good without him. In the lineup so maybe uh with him there i think his name's armand lovett uh if, with him in the lineup maybe they can uh vault past uh the surprising boston college team and maybe even in the top four if somebody uh, slides down um but yeah looking at that top four it's tough i mean you got notre dame pitt louisville and north carolina all solid programs uh obviously louisville uh bringing in some solid recruits nc or uh, unc sorry is um on top of the game, number one, and bringing in recruits right now. So, uh, but Kevs is right. I mean, anybody can beat anybody on a given night. We just took down North Carolina. Uh, Dan McCray, we, uh, he committed 11 turnovers in our game. So you never know. Um, that's why it makes this uh, conference so interesting is you never exactly know uh, who's going to win and uh, what the results are going to be. No, no. I mean, I'm interested to get your take in terms of the top two, in terms of Notre Dame and, and, um, Pittsburgh as well at the top there you know only 
I only lost one game in the conference play so far, seven and one. We we talked a bit about Pittsburgh actually on the last episode. I I think we I called them out as a I think their coach um their, their human coach is 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 rather good at this game to be perfectly honest with you. Um that that Pittsburgh team on paper doesn't necessarily look like a top team, but it is performing like one. And then also we know Nordstrom has got a good coach, uh, experienced veteran of um of the, the draft day sports college basketball games as well. Um, what's your, what's your take on those top two? Yeah, I mean, both definitely, definitely strong teams. Um, I knew Pitt was going to be good again, uh, just uh, because, you know, with my Seton Hall team that I also run in the Big East, we ended up playing uh, Pitt earlier on in the year and we got absolutely uh, dominated by them. I think we lost by almost uh, 40. So, I mean, number three ranked in the country right now, uh, 18 and two overall. I mean, they're uh, number four in the net. Uh, seven wins in a row they're they're on fire they're gonna be tough to take down um but if there is one team that can take them down i think it is it could be notre dame you know um just looking at notre dame's roster here i know uh in the discord channel their uh their coach has kind of been downplaying them a little bit but i mean burris is still a five-star point guard you still got um a couple solid guys there a couple solid seniors that they can rely on and um if you have some solid seniors on your team, you're going to find some success in this game. Um, just, uh, you know, from my experience in the off season or uh, sorry, the off offline uh, franchise that I've been doing, um, the seniors are huge, right? So if you can get a bunch of seniors and rely on those guys um, and then you get some talented freshmen and sophomores to, uh, to combine with them, I think uh, it's a good combo. And it looks like looking over Notre Dame's team here. I mean, it looks like they've got a, a good combination of both, right? You got a bunch of freshmen that are contributing, and then they've also got some solid senior uh, leadership. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, I, I, I kind of agree with you on that. I mean, looking at their roster, just as you were you were talking through that one. I mean, uh, throw it back to sort of Kev. I mean, you've got you've got the likes. We talked about Boston College last time, didn't we? In terms of how we how we felt they were kind of performing against the net rank, not net poll. Um, but you've got you've got Louisville in there at six and two now, an unranked team. I mean, is, is that a surprise that Louisville's not ranked at this moment in time? Um, it, it's not super surprising. Um, I, I'm gonna I'm looking at their team sheet now. I think the thing that's keeping them out of the top twenty five is, um, it, it's. I don't know. They, they they do have a few signature wins: Georgia, Virginia Tech. Um, they beat, but they've beaten Virginia Tech twice, and the NC Greensboro. But they've lost, you know, like five quad one and quad two games. Um, they did drop a game to Miami, which might be what's hurting them. Um, it they're they're a tough one to figure out, especially in terms of, of looking at the top twenty five, because you know I, I think you could make a case for them being at the you know between 20 and 25, especially when you see a team like St. Mary's who somehow wins one game against Gonzaga and gets in the top 25. Um, but, you know, I'm not surprised, to be honest with you, that they're sitting outside of, of that right now. Um, I am a little surprised that, you know, they've kind of picked things up and figured some things out, seven and three, you know, um, which means they were around six and three at one point in time. Um, but, you know, Louisville's a good team. They've got some good players. I know they're, they're not quite as deep as, you know, cards want them to be. Um, but I think they're uh, 100% in the thick of things for, for the ACC. And if they can continue to, you know, put wins together in conference play, I do think you'll see them sneak back into the top 25 um, before the season's over. Yeah, we'll, we'll certainly certainly see how, how this plays out. I mean, it's a fascinating conference, but, um, you know, it wouldn't be a, a a show if we don't ask our guest Blink to kind of give us these predictions of, of who he sees coming out on top of the ACC and maybe give us a bit of an insight into who he feels might be a, a national tournament contender in this conference this year. Yeah, I think, uh, again, you're looking at the top four teams. They're obviously the prohibitive favorites. Um, Notre Dame, Pitt, Louisville, and North Carolina. Um, just like Kevs was saying there uh, with Louisville, I think Louisville is one of those teams where I looked at, at the beginning of the year and I thought um, yeah, they're going to improve during the year. There's no question about it. They've got a couple talented freshmen. 
Um, the freshmen are going to get better as the year goes on. So uh, I'm really, I'm really going to watch out for Louisville come tournament time. I think they can make some noise. Um, UNC has obviously been a favorite since day one. So, I mean, if anybody beats UNC, um, that's going to be huge for them. Um, and again, like I'm looking at the rest of the pack here, you've got all these teams that are, that are right tight together. Uh, anybody can really go on a run here. Um, every team in the ACC has got some talented guys, you know, Virginia, Virginia Tech, like I talked about earlier, Boston College will be interesting to see if they can keep this up. I mean, they're they're back on a three game win streak, so it doesn't look like they're going to go away. I really thought Boston College and Wake Forest were going to be the two teams down at the bottom. Um and again, you got teams like Syracuse and Clemson where they're, you know, you don't know what you're going to get uh, come tournament time. Another team to look out for is NC State. I mean, you got NC State's got a talented player in Corey Pangrazio. And um, if you can uh, get any kind of help uh, to go along with him uh, come tournament time, they're a team to watch out for too. So, I mean, you can't you can't sleep on any of these uh, teams in the middle. I mean, you got to bring your A game every every night to uh, to compete against these guys. Um, but again, all the guys in the middle, we're all looking to take down the top teams. So it's uh, it should be quite the uh, AC tournament this year. I think it's going to be a lot closer than uh, than last year's tournament was in terms of uh, maybe some upsets. Yeah, really, really interesting. I think you've got a lot of very interesting human human coaches in in this in this league as well, which makes it a really fascinating prospect uh, going going forward. Right, Kev, did you have anything to add on that? Um, not really. I, I do think the ACC is going to probably get like six teams in the tournament, maybe seven, um, depending on how things play out. And, and you know, I'm not an expert in in tournament bids and and this you know in the game, but um, so I think it, I think it the the an interesting aspect of the ACC isn't just the upsets and like you know who wins it and stuff is I think there's a really good chance for you know one or two of you know either a Boston College or Virginia Tech or Georgia Tech um, possibly an NC State you know and, and obviously Duke's still in it like of those five teams or whatever you know I, I think two got a pretty good shot of getting in, into the NCAA tournament. Um, and then all of them have a have a you know a really good shot of, of like an NIT berth, I think, um, based on where things stand right now. So it'll be fun to watch and see who can kind of take care of things in the second half of conference play to to seal one of those bids up. Yeah, and I think that's one of the things that historically the ACC has always had a nice little advantage on is that they have a lot of really big programs in their own conference, so that when they get to tournament time. Not only if they have a decent out of conference schedule, but they their actual in conference schedule is normally really strong anyway. So you you look at some of these what you'd class mid conference teams in in the ACC, and when you look at on paper, they might be the record might be very similar to another conference, but if you're comparing it across strength of schedule, the strength of schedule is normally better in the ACC than it is in some of the other conferences, which kind of often give them the edge come tournament time and come you know deciding whether they they make the uh, the national tournament or not really it's been great it's been great chatting about the acc i mean i mean blink just before we kind of wrap up here is there anything else you want to to throw out there you know advertise the acc or or any observations in terms of players or or dark horses possibly coming out of this conference this year uh yeah i just want to uh I've kind of been on a little bit of a campaign here in, in the Discord to try to get um, the ACC filled with human human GMs, you know, human coaches. It would be nice to have every team in here with a uh, with a human coach, um, and then we can go head-to-head uh, -head with uh, battles from year to year. I think most of the conference is filled, uh, but there are still a couple teams that uh, uh, don't have any human coaches, um, so it would be nice to get that filled up. Um in terms of players, I mean, you've got you've got some talented freshmen, you know, Mike Gray from Louisville, obviously Dan McCray we've talked about, and it goes all the way up to, up the line to uh, the uh, the solid seniors. Um, you know, I mentioned Armin Lovett earlier, and uh, I'm really interesting to see interested to see how uh, Virginia Tech, um, you know, competes and how they how they do when he comes back. He just came back from a broken wrist. Um, and he's, it looks like he's a pretty solid player. He's only a freshman, too. So I'm wondering if maybe 
um, he's he could be a guy that sticks around for three, four years, and that's a, that's going to be a dominant player um, the next uh, couple seasons if they can uh, put some depth, uh, some solid depth with him. So um, Virginia Tech's kind of my sleeper team right now. I'm uh, they've also got John Jackson up there in the uh, the top. Uh, five scoring so they got two guys in the top seven in the ACC in scoring which is which is huge uh and it's one of the one so the reason why uh one of the reasons why I think that uh, Virginia Tech is going to be a uh, uh a threat here uh moving forward yeah in- interesting observation and uh yeah great let, let I, I absolutely agree you know let's get the ACC field it's a great conference to be in there's there's always interesting games in in this in this conference, every single sim, every single week on the schedule, you're always playing a, a team that has something something about them usually in the ACC. So, absolutely, if anyone's watching this back and is interested in picking up another team, dive into the ACC. Kev's anything anything else from you in terms of the ACC in general, um, dark horses or, or players to kind of watch out for? No, I, I think uh, you know Blink has has a has a better feel for the ACC than, than I do. So I think his his views are are good. Um, I, I will say I did notice on North Carolina the only, it, that it looks like they've the injury bug has bitten them a little bit. Um, Mike Bender is out for forty three days with like a broken hand, um, so that could be a big ACC you know news item, if you will. Um, I'm not sure if that puts him back in play for the conference tournament, but it looks like he'll be out for the remainder of the conference regular season schedule. And so, um, so you know, Blink, hey, uh, maybe that's a, a little bit extra of, of a path into that top four if, if you can get in there and, and UNC drops some games. But, um, but no, other than that, I'm going to keep an eye on the ACC. I, I do think there's some very interesting storylines here, and I, I think there's going to be some really, really good matchups to, to watch um as we go down the stretch yeah couldn't couldn't agree more I couldn't agree more that's an interesting observation with, with north carolina we'll see how that plays out they've they do have some depth hopefully to address that but um come conference tournament time that that could impact their chances possibly of winning this this acc tournament this year blink it's been great to have you on the show um welcome back of course anytime best of luck with georgia tech this year and your other three teams that you're looking after um, who knows? Maybe we'll see you making some noise in when won the tournaments this year with, with Georgia Tech. Yeah, let's hope so. I'm uh, very, really curious to see how we do the rest of the uh, season here, and hopefully we can uh, pull off a couple wins in that ACC tournament and start uh, opening up some eyes here in the ACC uh, to be a team to watch out for in the future. Um, want to thank you guys for having me on the show it's been uh it's been a pleasure and uh it's been really awesome to talk about uh the cbgm with uh with some uh some guys that have had some uh, podcast experience and uh hope to uh, maybe uh, come back on the show another time absolutely we'll certainly we'll invite you back on in a, in a future future moment in time to maybe talk a bit about the georgia tech recruiting class or how the tournament's gone etc definitely we'll definitely have you back on kev Great to have you on as always. I'm sure you'll be back for the next one where we, we talk a little bit more about different news in the CBGM. And if anyone's interested in joining to talk about their conference or their teams, we are always welcome to have guests on the show. But um, until next time, we'll see how the ACC plays out. And um, yeah, we'll be back talking all kinds of CBGM news for the episode three.